You know, I just about earlier this month, I was doing this bike ride, this 50 kilometer bike ride to raise money for our water projects around the world. Yeah, that's right. And it was ride, an ride for refuge. The ride for refuge. Yeah, yeah. And what an amazing day. You know what's so great is to mm. see, we did it with a lot of our staff members joining us and just really passionate about making a difference and engaging. Yeah, and, and there's the pictures. Yeah, and you know what? It's so <laughs> funny because I don't know if any of you have done a fundraiser, but when you start fundraising and you put it on social media, no one responds or you ask for money and nobody responds. And, you know, you have these moments of like, incredible highs, incredible lows, you're discouraged, you're excited. Yeah. And one of the things I kept saying to this, look at this awesome team here. Yeah, that's great. And this isn't even everybody. You know, it was hard to gather people in that, or that early morning, but one of the things <laughs> I would say to people is what we can't do alone, together we can change the world. So sometimes when you yeah. feel like you're hopeless or you can't raise that much or whatever, you get all these people involved. They all do what they can. And you know what? We raised over $14,000 for our water that's projects. Amazing. Just us, like with our friends and family. Now, that, that does a lot. Absolutely. Because I remember we were in one of our production meetings and we talked about these repurposed wells and what was the cost of that and how does that work? Yeah, there's just different things. So in Turkana, $1,000 can drought proof a family for life. In Uganda, you can reconstitute a well Hang for around 4500 You said that way too fast. Okay, That's sorry. amazing. No, 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 seriously. $1,000 will drought proof a family for life? That's that's incredible. That's amazing. It's so you so think of with what you raised, how many families that can help. And an African family is not like a, a North American family. You know, it could be like 10 to 15 people mm. per family. So amazing. You know, we also do wells in Uganda. And I think what became really meaningful as well uh, at the end of the ride was seeing what happened in Haiti. That was our third project that mm. we were raising money for. Biosand filters were raising money so that people can have clean water. And then we see the hurricane hit. And with the hurricane, cholera has been out, has broken out again. There's Look over 230 that. cases. The WHO said yesterday, the World wow. Health Organization said that cholera is breaking out everywhere. People have already died from it. It's incredible. Look at that, Joe. Look at the conditions that people are living in. It's like Haiti just keeps getting pounded over and over again. And I'm so thankful that here at Crossroads Relief and Development that we're able to partner with organizations on the ground and really help make a difference. Absolutely amazing. I've been talking to our friends on the ground there, yeah. and they're saying that there, there was a lot of lessons learned from the 2010 earthquake. You know, you heard stories of bigger organizations uh, wasting money or getting caught up in government corruption. Right. And that's what they're saying to us, is they're saying you need to partner with these small organizations on the ground hmm. that kind of skip all that and go right to the people. Those are the people that we partner with. Yeah, and great. they're just seeing incredible things going on. They actually are part of a group of expats who are all talking online and figuring out you're here, you're there, what do we see, how can we do this? And they said they've learned so many things from the earthquake. But I just look at our water projects and I think this mm. is the most important thing that we can do right now. They're saying that water is the number one need. More than a million people, the UN said, right now are in need of urgent exist, uh, assistance. And you just, mm. you know, Joe, you saw the earthquake, everybody helped. And I think sometimes people are just like, Haiti again? Like, like you know, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, it's, so sad. it's almost so like you terrible. get used to it. Like, oh yeah. yeah, well, Haiti's always in a mess. But I don't think we can underestimate the impact. They say it's like a nuclear bomb went off in Haiti. Just unbelievable. Well, listen, we mm. we uh, have been doing water projects there for years. We wanted to give you a little look at what we've been doing, and then we'll give you an update. Take mm -hmm. a look at this. Clean water is part of our daily life. So plentiful, it's easy to forget that millions in developing countries don't have it. For many, water is a matter of life and death. If unclean water is all that's available, people have no other choice. Because of this, 3.4 million people die every year, and the most vulnerable, a child, dies every minute due to waterborne diseases. Something must be done. Crossroads Relief and Development understands the importance of clean water and has supported programs that have provided it to so many, affecting over 120,000 in just the last few years. <laughs> One nation we've helped is Haiti, an island that has suffered severe poverty, corruption, massive hurricanes, and finally a catastrophic earthquake in 2010. With only 40% of its people accessing clean water, a quickly spreading cholera outbreak killed a further 8,000. It's been horrific. The areas that they draw water from are used by every animal that's loose. And even, um, you know, it's used by humans to uh, human waste. And so the history, the recent history, has been some serious cholera outbreaks. Cholera for young children is, is extremely serious because they dehydrate so quickly. So they get diarrhea, 
dehydrate, and they're so weak. Uh, if they don't instantly get to a hospital, um, they can be dead the same day. The outbreak caused rampant fear in remote villages who didn't know what was happening. We, we had this sickness come on us. We did not know what it was. We didn't have a government authority to come and explain to us what was going on. These are the things which made us afraid. Gilles de Coiffet is thankful his children were spared the disease, but tragically, he still lost both his brother and sister to the outbreak. So when our partners Chris and Leslie Rowling offered him an innovative water filter for his family, he jumped at the chance. First thing I want to say is that the filter is a very important thing for me. In fact, I would like to get a second filter so that when people come and ask me for water, I can say, yeah, go ahead and use that other filter. The filter uses biosand technology, which harnesses natural processes to clean 95 to 99 percent of biological agents from the water. I love the filters because they're so simple. In the first four inches of the sand bed inside the filter, there's a natural process. Larger microbes like worms need oxygen to survive, and so they actually end up dying off because there isn't enough oxygen past that first four inches. Other things like bacteria and viruses, it start clinging onto the sand grains and they attack the weaker ones. And it just sort of, it happens that the stronger ones tend to be the healthy versions of microbes and they attack the unhealthy ones, the ones that cause disease. It's just a naturally occurring process that we find in nature. And the Rollians can testify to the filter's amazing capability. They use it daily in their own home. If I was to buy our drinking water, I don't think anybody would, anybody would have a filter in their home. But I don't mind, because I know that the filter works 100%. And even now that we have small kids, uh, my whole family drinks water out of biosat filter. The filters were initially given away for free, but soon Chris and Leslie noticed a disturbing trend. Around 50% of them were abandoned within a year. I think it's natural when you come into a place like Haiti where there is such extreme poverty to just want to give. And in principle, that's not a bad thing, but when you're looking at development tools, you have to be thinking over the long term what's going to be helping people move forward. And often, a key component of that is having people be involved in the solution, making people pay a small copay of about $5 US. And it's enough that even the poorest of the poor can find the money for it. After adding the small copayment, plus in home follow up three times a year, the Rollings noticed a huge change in their statistics. Now, 95% of homes were using it one year later. I do not have enough strength in my body to give you enough thanks for the help that you have given us. It is impossible for us to pay the price of the filter if we had to pay the full price, and this is why I'm obliged to give you this thanks. To date, our partner, Clean Water for Haiti, has been able to put filters into 19,000 homes. But there are still thousands more waiting for so clean water. A, what would I do if, if I had to take my kids to the canal and, and say, here's, here's the water for today? If the parents that were watching would follow me, they would be horrified. You know, it, just, it just wouldn't happen. This is a permanent solution. This isn't something that, boy, I need you to help this family again. It's done. Investment's done, we move on and find some other family that's needing it. Thank you for all you are doing to make a difference in Haiti. Merci, questions. Thank you, Chancellor. Merci, Chancellor. Oh my goodness, how do, you, how do you talk after watching that? And that, that dear woman at the end, with her, thank you, Crossroads, bless you, Crossroads. We want to say thank you, mm -hmm. you know, to our viewers all across the country who partner with us to, to give the, this life-giving thing, water, that we take so, we take for granted here, Cheryl. I have a friend who came over from Israel, and Israel has a real water shortage all the time, and I took him to Niagara Falls. And he's watching a million gallons of water every second just fall to the floor and we watch it for fun. And he says, you don't understand, 30 seconds of that falls would resolve the water crisis for almost all time in Israel. Wow. You know, and I'm thinking about the physical water that we're giving people and that's, that's so important. I don't want to take away from that at all. Mm -hmm. But something that's at least equally important, if not more important, is that we're not just giving them uh, physical water. But when we demonstrate by the, these acts of love, 
but we're leading them to, to the ultimate water, the one who gives water that he said, if you drink from this water, you'll never thirst again. And, and that was Jesus, you know. And in the Middle East, Cheryl, where it was so dry all the time and water was just like here, water is, is everything. He said, you know, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink of me and you'll never thirst again. And again, I don't want to downplay the importance of physical water, but it's equally important to let you know out there if you're watching today and you're feeling thirsty, you're flipping through the channels and you land on the show called 100 Huntley Street. You know, what's this all about? And you hear all the stuff we're doing, you know, with the physical water. But we want you to understand that today, if you're, if you're searching, if you're thirsty in your soul, there's only one way to resolve and to solve and to fill that void in your life. And that's by coming into a relationship with God by accepting and following Jesus. And so I love that we not just bring the water when we come to these precious people, but we also bring what we call the gospel, which is good news. We bring that message of hope and of salvation. And Cheryl, if people want to help us help the people on the ground, how, how can they do that, those who are Absolutely. watching at home today? You know, we'd love to get you involved. And, and you know, I think part mm. of that love is that we love people by giving them dignity where they can actually That's get the good. clean, you don't just give them a bottle of water and then they're, they're thirsty again, but yeah. they get something in their home forever and they can care for their families. And there's, there's the love of God in that, giving them dignity. If you want to be part of ministering to Haiti, there's other work we're doing as well, helping to rebuild, please give us a call right now, 1-800-265-3100. You can go to 100huntley.com, just like with the Ride for Refuge, if we all do something, we can change the world together and we can let Haiti know that we love them and help them rebuild. Thank you so much for all that you're doing, Joe. It's so exciting. You know I could talk about this stuff forever. 